Welcome to our third lecture. Today we will talk about the voltage divider and later about the Wheatstone bridge circuit. Let's start with the voltage divider. So what is it? If we have a serious connection of resistors and we have a known voltage drop here, then the voltage divider means that this voltage here will be subdivided into voltage drops at our resistors and here we want to calculate the voltage drop on any of them. Okay, so uh, we know the total voltage drop and we know the values of all the resistors and we want to know the voltage drop un. Okay, what could we do? Hmm, we could calculate the total current because we know from the last lecture that the total resistance would be the sum of the resistor values and therefore we could calculate the current with Ohm's law. Okay, and if we know the current, the current in a series connection is the same in every single element, therefore we can use Ohm's law to calculate our voltage drop here. Okay, and that means so you n is rn times i and if we put our equation for i into this we get this expression and this is the equation for our voltage divider. What is important is that this equation is valid only if the current in all the resistors is the same. So if there's a splitting knots anywhere in the series connection, it's not a series connection anymore and you can't use this equation, okay? I will show you a special case. Uh, this is the voltage divider with only two resistors. Okay, uh, again, we know the resistor values and uh, the total voltage drop and we know our voltage divider rules for as many resistors as we could have. And uh, reducing it for only two resistors means that we could uh, calculate this first voltage here uh, with u times r1 divided by r1 plus r2 or we could also calculate uh, this voltage here. So please remember, so voltage divider rule says you take the total voltage drop and multiply it with a fraction and in the counter is uh, the resistor value uh, where you're interested in the voltage drop and in the denominator is the sum of all the resistors in the series connection. Okay, and now at the end I want to show you the loaded voltage divider. Uh, up to now it's just the usual voltage divider uh, as on the slide before and we know that we can calculate this voltage here with this equation. And now it could happen that there is another resistor. I call it RL as a load resistor. Okay, uh, is this equation still valid? Um, no, remember this equation is valid only if the same current flows through all the resistors. And if we have a look on our circuit, there would be a current flowing through R1 and then it splits and flows on the one side through R2 and through RL. So uh, there isn't the same current in R1 and R2 and therefore this equation here isn't valid anymore. Hmm. What could we do? Ah, it's quite easy. We could say that these two resistors can be combined to one. You remember? parallel connection of two resistors, we can use this equation here and I call this new resistor R2 prime. 
Okay, and that means we can again use our voltage divider equation, but this time we don't use R2, but we use R2 prime. Let's continue with the Wheatstone bridge circuit. The Wheatstone bridge is a often used circuit for measurement purposes. We have a voltage source and four resistors in our circuit. And uh, there are two clamps. We are interested in the bridge voltage between the clamps here. And if we want to calculate it, we need, for instance, this voltage drop and this voltage drop, because then we could use Kirchhoff's voltage law and calculate our UB. Okay, how can we get then these voltages U2 and U4? We could also calculate U1 and U3, but let's take the voltages on the lower side here. Uh, let's start with U2. Do you recognize anything you already know? Ha! <laughs> this here is just a voltage divider. Therefore, we can calculate the voltage U2 using our known voltage divider equation. Okay, and we need U4. Hmm. Hey, this is again just a voltage divider. Have a look here. This voltage uh, is connected to a parallel connection of R1 and R2 and R3 and R4. And therefore, uh, the total voltage drop over R3 and R4 is again U. And that means we can again use our voltage divider rule, but this time with the resistor values of R3 and R4. And now we can use our Kirchhoff's voltage law and uh, therefore we know that our bridge voltage is U2 minus U4 and as a total equation we get this here for our bridge voltage. Okay, up to now it might be quite boring because you still don't know why we should use this uh, circuit. Uh, one purpose of it is the measurement of values of unknown resistors. And I will show you how to do that. Uh, have a look on this circuit. There we will have an unknown resistor Rx and we want to find its value. Okay, let's start with the bridge circuit as we've seen before. So we know that this here is our bridge voltage. And there is a very important special case and that is when the bridge is so-called balanced. And a balanced bridge has a bridge voltage of zero. Okay, and if we have a look to our equation, uh, when will the bridge voltage be zero? Uh, when the expression in the brackets becomes zero. And that means uh, we have subtraction there. So therefore, uh, both uh, fractions have to have the same size. Okay, um, I will do a bit boring mathematics. Uh, I take the inverse of those fractions um, I split the sum and now you see uh, on both sides we have R2 divided by R2 and on the right side R4 divided by R4. So these two uh, fractions become one and now we can subtract one on both sides and this is our condition for a balanced bridge. If the ratio of the first resistor and the second resistor is the same as the ratio of the third and the fourth resistor, then our bridge is balanced and that means that the bridge voltage is zero. Okay, and how could we use it? 
we create a measurement circuit now. And therefore, um, I uh, change the resistor R3 and R4 by a new element and it's a potentiometer. A potentiometer is just a longer resistor and uh, the resistor material is connected to the upper and the lower connection point and there is a third connector and that is a slide wire and with that slide wire we can uh, move along uh, the resistor uh, here and if we select a special position then we have uh, yeah, two resistors. We have the lower part of the potentiometer and the upper part. So if we have the circuit and our bridge voltage here, then uh, our potentiometer could be split uh, in two parts. The lower part I call P times R. P is a parameter uh, and this just indicates the position of the slide wire. So P could be between 0 and 1. If P is 0, the slide wire is on the lower end. And if P is 1, then the slide wire is at the upper point. OK, and that means that the upper resistor is just 1 minus P times R. OK, what else do we have on our circuit? There is a resistor Rx and this should be an unknown resistor. We want to measure its value. And Rc uh, is a comparison resistor. This is a resistor where we exactly know the value of. OK, and if we use our condition for a balanced bridge here. Then we know that if we divide the comparison resistor by the unknown resistor, then it should be the same as 1 minus P times R divided by P times R. Okay, you see in the right fraction that we can uh, get rid of 1 R, so we could write it like this. We have our new Wheatstone bridge circuit and we want to find the value of Rx. So what do we do? We uh, insert Rx uh, into our circuit and also a well-known comparison resistor. And then we start to adjust our potentiometer and we measure the voltage of the bridge in the middle and when the voltage becomes zero, then our bridge is balanced. And then we know that our uh, condition uh, is valid. And that means we can uh, solve for Rx and we get this equation here to calculate our unknown resistor value. So that's it for today. And now do yourself a favor and work on the practice tasks.